Yo, what's up everyone? Forty here. Alright, here is going to be a read-through of this week at Bungie. First cold read-through. I'm going to read it all the way through, so you're going to have me fumbling on words because I have not looked at this all the way through, etc, etc. So here we go. This week at Bungie, February 3rd, 2022. From Dylan. This week at Bungie, we have a lot going on. Hello and welcome to another installment of This Week at Bungie, our weekly source of news and chatter from around the studio. Nothing too wild happened this week, right? Just your normal Monday morning announcement of Bungie joined Sony Interactive Entertainment. Yeah, that was huge news. That seemingly came out of left field, but hopefully it's a very good thing for Bungie and hopefully a very good thing for us uh, Bungie enthusiasts. Well, okay. That is kind of a big deal. If you haven't heard much about it, well, we've joined Sony Interactive Entertainment. There's a lot to unpack here, and we highly recommend reading through our announcement article from Bungie CEO Pete Parsons and our Destiny 2, Destiny 2, our shared vision article from the development team. So yeah, so I think the key word here is Sony, Sony Interactive Entertainment. So I don't think this is per se a game move for Sony's part. I believe this is a move on their entertainment, like movies, TV, etc., etc. So Destiny is our layout. Uh, Destiny 2, our shared vision. One community, multi-platform. Destiny 2 will stay on all current platforms and will expand to new platforms. Two, self-published, creatively independent. Bungie maintains full creative control and publishing independence of Destiny Universe. Three, same game everywhere. Every player should have an amazing Destiny, to Destiny experience, no matter where you choose to play. So, from what I understand, won't see anything change from our side of it until after at least the final shape. In the realm of Destiny 2, we don't expect you to notice much of a change in your day-to-day -day adventures, as I was saying, as a Guardian. We aren't going to make Destiny 2 platform exclusive. We're committed to Destiny that you play on your platform of choice. And that the same great game experience, regardless of what device you are using. We're going to continue to develop amazing new worlds for multiple platforms. And we are more than excited to for about what this potential unlocks for us. If you haven't read the frequently asked questions in our update from the dev team, please do so. So with that said, what else is going on? Well, it's February for starters. We're less than three weeks away from the launch of the Witch Queen. Did you see that one? we hit one million pre-order sales? That's crazy. Did you hear that, Savathun? One million guardians would like a word. And a twit, tweet, twitter. Thank you for more than 1 million Destiny 2 Destiny players who have pre-ordered Destiny 2 The Witch Queen. With your incredible support, it's on track to be the most pre-ordered expansion in Destiny 2 history. See you on 2 22, 22 Guardians. So 1 million pre-orders. That's pretty crazy. Destiny 2 a dead game, right? Right? That's what everyone says? I think not. We also had a kick-ass gear kick-ass gear trailer to go live Tuesday. Have you seen it yet? Well, if you have, we're going to embed the video right here for you to go through. Carnage. Through the carnage, frame by frame. Hunting for new info. There's a lot of cool stuff here. I suggest you read it or watch it. Really cool. I'm not going to play it here. You may have noticed there was a quick little glimpse into our weapon crafting at the top of the video. Well, let's take a moment to walk through it. No, not just the video, but crafting as a feature. After will follow the TWAB tradition of digging into the nitty gritty of sandbox balance, patch notes, and a quick review. Just kidding. This TWAB was already over 6,000 words. Nothing about it is quick. Let's dig in. Welcome to the Enclave. Savathun is building an army of hive. These aren't just ordinary hive, mind you. These become the Lucent Brood. How could this happen? What will the Vanguard do as we begin to question the line between light and dark? As you begin to unravel the mystery and battle of the Witch Queen's Brood, you'll discover the Enclave. This will be your destination for weapon crafting. Ooh, weapon crafting, let's go. Crafting a legendary weapon from scratch isn't a simple matter. Finding patterns. Think of weapon blueprints. Collecting materials and building your weapon from the starting point. 
After crafting your tool of destruction, you'll begin to unlock its full potential through combat. So we're basically building our own lightsabers, right? Actually, kind of cool. I like that. Begin your craft. Begin your craft. God damn it. Beginning your quest to craft. Early in the Witch Queen campaign, you'll be given an introductory quest that will that runs you through the ins and outs of crafting. In the first and second missions of the Witch Queen, free to all players, Guardians will uncover the deep sight ability to do and be introduced to the Enclave. This is the Enclave. It looks like a big game board. I like it. Ooh. That's actually kind of cool. There's little molds here and everything. I dig it, I dig it, I dig it. Should be fun. This is where you'll begin to shape your first glaive. A brand new weapon archetype being introduced in the Witch Queen. All of the necessary materials will be provided for your first crafted weapon, but you'll also be given a short tutorial on how to find those materials for future crafting. A subset of weapons and archetypes will be craftable from the start, but more will be added in the future. Very cool. Definitely dig that. In the order to shape your the future of destruction, you'll need to find to do a little bit of research first. Patterns are your first requirement. Some of the first acquired through quest completions, while others can be earned by completing various gameplay objectives. Once you've earned your desired pattern, it can be crafted at any time with the required materials. Now it's all about the mixings. Here's our here's our game pad. No, oh, okay. Shaped weapon come to pass. Auto rifle solar primary weapon. Oh man, this is gonna be cool. After reaching the Enclave and crafting your first glaive, randomly rolled weapons throughout the game have a chance to drop with a new ability, Deep Sight Resonance. This will be used as you begin to target specific traits to craft. As an example, if you find a Deep Sight Resonance legendary auto rifle with the Rampage perk, you can complete an objective and create the essence of the perk and then craft a weapon with the Rampage or an another perk that increases damage. That's crazy. It's going to be so fun. Ooh, he's already 1569. That guy's been grinding. Crazy. Look at his charts. Nine, 999,999. Someone's been hacking. Hacks. Pictured a guardian holding deep side resonance weapon. Noted by the red weapon borders. Oh. Okay. Kind of cool. Interesting. Forensic Nightmare Submachine Gun. It's a cool looking machine gun. SMG. Picture a deep side resonance weapon with no progress essence ready to be attuned through combat. So we're basically got catalysts on all the weapons now. I don't know. It's really grindy. We've turned a little grindy game into a very grindy game. It is what it is, right? Pictured a deep sight resonance weapon with full progress essence ready to be extracted. Extracted. Like current weapons, not every weapon pattern will be compatible with every trait, but you'll have a good list of traits to ma mix and match as you customize a given weapon to your desired specification. If it, it doesn't stop there though. Through the Enclave, you'll be able to kick things up a notch and enhance your trait through strengthen, to strengthen their flavor. Loving your weapon and enhanced traits. Once a weapon is crafted, Guardians may begin to increase its level by using it in activities and by defeating enemies. This is where the bulk of your crafting playtime will be. The more you use the weapon, the faster you'll, you'll unlock its full potential. Enhanced stats and traits will be unlocked when reaching higher levels, granting slight bonuses to your weapon's capabilities. Our goal through this system is to give players a reason to invest in their weapons, far beyond what masterworking could offer in the past. Each weapon can now act as a long tail pursuit as you look to make your freshly crafted weapon the best it can be. It's really going to be interesting. I wonder if this is across all PvP and PvE or just PvE. So it's going to be interesting. There's a lot of stuff there. It can be intimidating to start making decisions on how to build your weapon, so we're also giving you the ability to reshape your crafted weapons in the Enclave if you want to mix it up. Mix up the components of your weapons after you've finished crafting them. 
You can switch up what barrel, mags, or traits you choose so you don't feel like you got locked down to one path forever. Shape or reshape. Interesting, interesting. As Guardians begin to embrace the new system, you'll begin to see new legends rise. Some will prefer Hake and other foundries. Others may dabble in new weapons from Redacted. We're excited to see which weapons you embrace. Mementos. While the majority of your crafting experience will be dedicated to mixing, matching, and enhancing traits, there is also an opportunity for a bit of customization when it comes to the appearance and activity-specific trackers. At launch, one weapon memento will become available for players to earn through Gambit, unlocking a Gambit-themed appearance and tracker. Rank up your weapon to max level, head back to the Enclave, and apply your freshly earned memento to, for some sweet flair. More of these will come online through Trials of Osiris, Grandmaster Nightfalls. We have plans for more mementos down the line. We're excited to introduce new in-game rarity cosmetic item for players to chase as they build out their new arsenal of weaponry. Exotic Crafting Legendary weapons aren't the only thing you'll be able to craft. The upcoming Osteo Striga, Exotic SMG, and the three class unique exotic clay glaives will also be crafted through the enclave once you find their respective patterns of course super cool we got a hunter with the glaive they're, they're all different shape that is cool i like it very cool while legendary weapons can be crafted from the ground up exotic crafting is more about fine-tuning something with a divine defined identity you may have the opportunity to customize things like barrels or stocks while preserving the exotic look and feel. Looking for a longer range profile for the weapon or opting to shred through your enemies up and close and personal? Through the Enclave, you can do just that. All right, folks, we're at the end of our weapon crafting preview. Will you have questions? Undoubtedly. Launch day of the Witch Queen is just around the corner. We're excited to see what weapons you create. Don't worry, we aren't done with the TWAB just yet. We still have some exciting news regarding weapons to cover. Let's talk tuning. Tuning up, tuning down, tuning all around. And that's how you do the hokey pokey? Maybe? No, probably not. Crafting is going to introduce a, an entirely new way to invest in a, weapon, a given weapon. When hunting for your new favorites, it's not just about the looks, but about the feels. Weapon feature lead Chris Proctor is on deck to walk through some changes coming to weapons, perks, and archetypes in the Witch Queen. The team has been hard at work over the last few months to bring this to life, and we've got a lot to cover. Of course they do. If you're new to Destiny, if you're new to the Destiny sandbox, we aren't too deep into terminology and the know-how. This can be a lot to process at first. While we know a few of our sandbox-minded community members will break this down, through YouTube videos and write-ups, there's no shame in skimming through this. Sandbox is all about feel, and you'll be getting your hands on the changes in the Witch Queen launches. If you're brave enough to take on the challenge of reading this in full, take it slow. Grab some water, maybe a snack or two. <laughs> Let's get to it. Take it away, Proctor. From Pinnacle to Pursuit Weapons. When Pinnacle weapons were introduced, they were tuned and presented as a best-in-class weapons that were to act as rewards for players dedicated for a particular activity. They excited and motivated players, but they were expensive to build for legendary weapons and some undesirable side effects, such as PvP, pinnacle weapons becoming mandatory in PvE, recluse, mountaintop, etc., etc., are becoming incredibly unpleasant to play against or so strong that no other weapon in its class could compete in PvP, mountaintop, not forgotten, etc., etc. When we moved away from pinnacle weapons, we didn't go much into much detail, so we'd like to take a moment to clarify the move and also introduce the pursuit weapons for next season. The intent as of season 12 is that pursuit weapons should be a solid weapon, roughly 70% of a quote-unquote god roll in its archetype, with perk options that will well, work well in PvP and PvE and will be reliably obtained without a huge grind. These could act as a good starter weapons for both PvP and PvE while leaving space for weapons from pinnacle activities like Trials, Raids, Nightfalls to exceed this potential. We generally ship a similar weapon with higher potential in the same season. Note, Salvager Salvo basically ignores this guideline. Oops, 
but we really wanted to put a chain reaction on a special we we ammo weapon. We don't currently see a reason to touch it. Chain reaction is going to be a rare, rare on special weapons though. Interesting. I wonder if it's going to be common in heavy then. I wonder if that's what they're trying to say. Here's a quick breakdown of how Pursuit Weapons in since Season 12 compares to the random rolled options currently in the game. Adored is a good sniper, but a better sniper rifle shipped along it or since. Salvager Salvo Breach Grenade Launcher is a great room clearing weapon, but doesn't have the utility of blinding grenades or auto loading holster. So there are other legendary grenade launchers, such as Truth Teller or Ignition Code, that often take its place in harder contests. Content is true. No composure and an excellent fusion rifle, and even more so in the season after it shipped and brought back the reservoir burst perk. But plug 1.1 and glacial chasm can get also can also get reservoir burst and Cartesian coordinate has a better option for DPS. Very, very true. The ascendancy rocket launcher brought back explosive light perk, but hothead can also get it. This as an also other good perk options. With that, let's take a look at the Reckless Endangerment Pursuit Shotgun. With this this weapon coming in Season 16 and introduces the new Steady Hand perk for a massive handling boost after a kill, plus Snapshot, there are several other shotguns released more sought after in PvP and PvE perks. Origin Traits. We've been talking about the difficulty of making different weapons of the same type feel unique for years at this point, and in the Witch Queen, we're doing something about it. Every weapon that's new or returning in the Witch Queen will have origin trait determined by its source in the third column, including all new legendary weapons and returning trials, Iron Banner and Nightfall weapons. Origin traits will only appear on new drops of the weapons. They won't be act retroactively added to old drops. Hmm. I don't know if I like that. It'd be nice if we could retroactively have them on our god rolls already, right? These traits vary in effect but the guideline is that they have either high uptime or medium power effects or low uptime and high power there are 14 origin traits in total shipping in the witch queen and season 16. we expect to ship around three new ones each season after season 16. example one for season 17 one for the raid or dungeon and one for this seasonal event until we have one for each event when we refresh old weapons from a given source for example, an existing raid or old pool of seasonal weapons, we may create a new origin trait at the same time. Here are some examples. Trials of, of Osiris, Alacriti. Alacriti? Alacriti. Alacriti. I'm sure it's said weird. Gain increased reload, stability, aim assist, and range when you're the last member of your last living member of your fire team or running solo. Plus 20 reload, plus 20 stability, plus 10 aim assist, plus 10 range. Jesus. Solo also includes Lost Sectors and Rumble, for example. Nightfall Strikes. Running, stunning Recovery. Stunning a cha champion partially refills your magazine, triggers health regeneration, and improves recovery for a short duration. That sounds amazing. Grants 60 health instantly, plus 40 recover for 3 seconds. That is going to be amazing. Holy crap, that's going to be really amazing. Crucible, one quiet moment. Grants increased reload when out of combat. Plus 40 reload stat when out of combat. You haven't dealt damage or received damage for four seconds. Interesting. Strikes, Vanguard's Vindication. Final blows with this weapon grant a small amount of health. Small equals seven health. Interesting. Anytime that makes sense due to the source of activity, a weapon will have multiple origin traits selectable. For example, Nightfall weapons can select between Nightfall and Vanguard strikes. Trials weapons can strike can select between Trials and Crucible traits. The Pursuit weapon can select between Gambit, Vanguard, Crucible traits since it can be acquired from any of those three activities. One other case, see below. Weapon Foundries. Guardian, there was something I wanted to tell you. What was it? Banshee scratches his forehead. Oh yeah, guns. I was cleaning out that locker back there. Banshee motions to his dust cake storage container. Found a couple things you might be interested in. I don't do a good Banshee. DiMaggio does the best Banshee, because he is Banshee. The Exo reaches into a crate next to him and pulls out a glistening few 55 sniper rifle. 
A stack of shiny new Cyrus weapons, manufactured by the before the Red War by the looks of them. He peers down the sights of rifle. Been years since I held a new Cyrus. Good balance, solid craftsmanship. This is damn fine work. Banshee stares off wistfully, seeming to forget you're there. His eyes snap back at you. What was I going to tell you? Oh, right, guns. Banshee uncreates more weapons in mint condition. These were earmarked for Zavala, Drifter, Shax. Maybe if you're lucky, they'll let you play with them. There's a lot more than where that came from, Banshee gestures to a whole stack of crates swimming in a cloud of dust. Hand cannons, pulse rifles, Amalon, hockey, Viced. You're going to have a ball. Oh, my God. I love the Amalon frames. My, that, I think those are my favorite frames, the Amalon frames. They handle so nice, and they look great, too. In Season 16, we're replacing the old world loot pool with 12 new weapons in the style of Destiny 2 Year 1 Foundry weapon sets. Three weapon sets each from Suros, Amalon, Hake, Vice Foundries, plus one Foundry weapon from each Vanguard, Gambit, and Crucible. Cool, cool, cool. So they're giving us more room. And that's what they're saying on our vault. Otherwise, we're just going to have to delete so much stuff. Pictured, a handful of weapons you'll find in Legendary Engrams on February 22nd. So not all are pictured, mind you. Oh, shit. Not all. That's a, that's a nice looking uh, scout right there. Hockey shoddy. Nice. I like, I like. That looks like a judgment. Anyway. Each weapon will come with one foundry trait themed around that foundry's personality. Suros, Suros Energy. Reloading grants this weapon's bonus handling and reduces incoming flinch for a short time. Plus 40 handling, 20% flinch resistance for 6 seconds after reloading. Holy crap, that's going to be massive in PvP. Hockey, Hockey Breach Armaments. This we weapon deals increased damage against vehicles, turrets, barricades, and stasis crystals. Turrets include stasis turrets, Plus 15 to vehicles, plus 30 to structures and turrets. Holy crap. Amalon. Amalon Fluid Dynamics. This weapon has increased reload speed and stability for the top half of the magazine. Stability max, plus 20 reload. Max, plus 30. Reduces the magazine, gets lower. Interesting. Well, Amalon's going to be fun. Vice. Vice Stinger. Chance on damage to partially refill this weapon's magazine. Cool. In addition to the Foundry Origin trait, each Foundry weapon's perks, perks pool lean into that Foundry's identity. For damage, for big damage for Hake, consistency for Cirrus, abilities tie in to <laughs> weird stuff for Amalant. Maybe that's why I like it. Weird stuff. Never stop firing for Vice. Pictured upcoming sh Vanguard Shotgun, Criswell Hand Cannon, and Gambit Auto Rifle. It's a nifty frame on that hand cannon. That's a cool looking ham. That's cool. I'm excited, boys and girls. We got some cool stuff coming. Foundry weapons that drop from a source aside from the whirlpool can switch between foundry trait and that source's trait. This doesn't imply that foundry weapons will be common outside of the whirlpool. For example, on a, a roll on the new Gambit Hake High Impact Auto Rifle, Herat C might look like this. Works through rifling or polygonal rifling. Armor piercing rounds are flared magwell. Perpetual motion. Focus fire. Invading, invader tracker. Gambit or origin track. Trait. Hake breach armaments. Hake origin trait. Kill tracker. See below. Range masterwork. We know we haven't brought back all your favorite foundry weapon types, but don't worry. You can expect to see foundries receive additional each additions each season for the following the witch queen with some fun surprises thrown in later in the year interesting global all right this is where some fun begins the rest of this section will be more of a patch notes preview feel lots of bullets not a lot of pictures still have that snack and and water handy feel free to take a moment and get a refill do. Do stay hydrated. Kill trackers for once reason to masterwork weapons, but now we see no reason to gate these ma behind masterworking. That presented, they will be present present by default on all weapons that are shipped in Forsaken and later. Exotic weapons prior to Forsaken will be updated in a later release. Yes, this means masterworking should no longer be seen as mandatory. 
We expect to see plus 10 to a weapon stat or plus 10 to primary stat, plus 3 to stats for adepts to only matter to dedicated PvP players. We have no specific plans to change for changes to master working at the stage, but we'll revisit it later. Note that we did discuss gating the origin trade behind master working, but ultimately this won't wouldn't be achieved the goal of the weapon differentiation for master worked weapons for non master work weapons. Following the armor's armor team's footsteps, weapon models for legendary weapons are now free and instant to insert. Nice. We feel we believe that many pain points around special weapons and crucible are exacerbated by how easy it is to currently is to acquire special ammo. And while we've touched on this in the past, we're making further adjustment now. Players will now only drop one special ammo upon death or equivalent, no matter how much they were carrying, as long as they weren't completely empty. The maximum you can pick up on a special brick is one for a shotgun, fusion, or sniper rifle, or equivalent to other weapons. Scavenger models added to this as normal, but we'll be evaluating this in their place in Crucible in the future. Players quickly found a way to execute the quick swap glitch, so we fixed another animation cancel. Archetypes. In season the Season 15 Fusion Rifle rework had a lot of moving parts. Rapid Fire, Precision, Adaptive Fusions came out of all different, out of this all different, but quite strong. But high impact fusions are hurting. We've seen all fusion rifle subfamilies occupy different roles as, and want to maintain large differences in, cha in charge time to keep these distinct for now. So we're nudging damage up to make it easier to land these, land these kill range at PVP and bumping the PVE damage scaler. That said, we'll keep an eye on how they're doing the may, may adjust charge time down a smidge in the future. Increased increased high impact fusion rifles damage per bolt from 62 to 64. This doesn't seem like a lot, but it allows more rolls to cross bolts cross, cross bolts to kill thresholds. Increased high impact fusion rifle PVE damage bonus from 15 to 20 percent. So I don't know if a lot of you have faced the PVP fusions. They don't need any buffing at all. No range buff, no aim assist buff. Seriously, they're annoying. We like that crowd control capabilities of breach grenade launchers in PVE have taken off. But as it, as it stands, there isn't meaningful trade off for the added utility that blinding or concussive grenades give you. And it's unreasonable in that way to annoy other players in PVP can also one shot them. Reduce blinding and concussive grenade damage by 25%. That'll help, because it is annoying. And while it's still hard to get killed or kills with a P with a grenade launcher in PvP, it's still annoying to get that blinding flash. Rocket launcher sub subfamilies have lacked meaningful differences for a while, and their free tracker tracking precision are flat out better. So we're pushing them further apart by adjusting damage. We may take a deeper look at rocket launchers later. Damage adjustment by subfamily. Precision, 0.95x times. High impact, 1 times. Adaptive, 1.05 times. And aggressive, 1.05. We took a big swing at sniper rifle aim assist based on zoom in Beyond Light and have seen this play out and are revisiting the tuning on the zoom based AA scaling. Low zoom snipers have more of an aim assist reduction than they needed. High zoom snipers are getting some pretty silly headshots uh, right now. Yes, they are. Reduced variance in AA scaling between be, between low 35 zoom and high 60 zoom sniper rifles. Cone angle scaler increased by uh, somewhere around 25% on low zoom. Reduced by some by 9% uh, on high zoom. Pulse rifles take slightly too long to kill red bar enemies in PVE. We're buffing their damage versus miners by 10%. But if you want an exotic pulse rifle to feel better, oh boy, keep reading. This is true. P pulse rifles are not in a good place in PvE, even though they are a champion stunner. So good. We need even more of a buff for pulse rifles. Exotic weapons. 
Exotic primary and trace rifles aren't sufficiently stronger than legendaries for them to be all worth bringing into hard PvE content, particularly against miners. Note that this change applies to all exotics that use primary ammo, includes most secondary effects, i.e. e.g. perk triggering explosions. Increased damage versus miners in PvE by 40%. Wow. That is going to be amazing. Wow. Outbreak is going to be legit. Chaperone is a terror in PvP, particularly with the nerf to pellet shotguns and the reduced frequency of grenade and melee abilities. It outperforms some weapons that ought to be good counters for it. For example, sidearms and submachine guns. Reduced passive range buff from 2 meters to 0.5 meters. Damn. Duality is in, is in a similar place to Chaperone, but it's not quite as rangy. On the other hand, it's exotic trait shipped with the constraint that it would wipe on reload to make it harder to change. Having seen it in action for a while, we don't think that the limitation needs to be there. Reduced passive range buff in slug mode, right, when aiming down sights, from 1.25 meters to 0.5. Pellet mode is unaffected. The on black wings damage buff no longer clears on reload. Interesting. Terabuzz extremely strong as it is, but it currently demands complete commitment with no weapon switching. This constraint is a bit harsher than it needs to be, so we've loosened it up without removing it entirely. Also, the duration extension when damaging players actually did function PvP. It was so subtle that players kept reporting that it was bugged, so we bumped them up. Now reduce perk progress by half instead of clearing it on the weapon stow. Increased ravenous beast duration increases for damaging a player slightly. I don't like that. Terrible is already a terror in PvP. If someone is good with it, it's just flat out a ravenous beast. We'll see. Ruinous Effigy has been an overdue for a look at its Beyond Light nerf, the nerf to damage dealt while guarding. So we're rolling that back. Note that the other part of that nerf was to the airborne standard melee attack and this hasn't been touched. Increase the damage dealt by guarding with transmutation sphere by 66%, 30% against players. Note, transmutation sphere multi-kills now count for orb generation armor mods. Previously, only kills with the beam would trigger this. Interesting. Luminous stats just don't compare to other 140 adaptive hand cannons. And its usage reflects that. So we're updating these alongside some legendary hand cannons so that they'll be used in 150 RPM. Increased range from 4, 4, 44 to 59. Increased base stability stat from 46 to 56. Sorry, Thorn fans. Thorn is already strong and popular, and a similar buff would turn it into a monster. It's already a monster. It's gnarly. I love using Thorn in PvP. Aegis Scepter initial implementation used Super Regeneration Scalers, which had a very weird effects in activities that also had scalers. So we've rebuilt the, to turn off regeneration while active, and have implementation a slower drain using a different method. Fixed being able to activate or continue using empowered mode while suppressed or stasis encased. Rebuilt that, per, rebuilt the perk. Used to modify supercharge re rate. Now freezes super recharge and deducts super directly. Fixing several issues with activities that char change charge rate and outliers for recharge based on intellect stats. Super should now drain more slowly while empowered. DMT feels good to use both on mouse and keyboard and controller. We don't want to go back to it feeling unreliable, but it's far too good at spamming hip fire shots at long range as it, it as it stands. This is very true. Reduce the catalyst hip fire rate from 150 to 130. I don't see that as a good nerf in PVP. I think it needs some aim assist reduced, honestly. Lorentz Driver and Arbalist remain fairly hard to counter in PvP. One common complaint is how easily they can shoot through flinch. We'll be keeping an eye on these moving forward and have another change planned if needed. Increase flinch received. It's not even that, it's the aim assist. I mean, you literally can be aiming somewhere else and it's going to track. Forerunner's ammo economy was fairly conservative when we shipped in 30th anniversary, but having 
Seeing how it's used in PvP, we believe it would benefit from gaining a little more ammo per special brick. Increased ammo picked up from a special ammo brick from 2 to 3 and 4 to 5 with the scavenger mod. Legendary weapons. Several legendary weapons have out of band stats, either to their benefit, detriment, or a bit of both. When infusion caps were still around, this was okay because they'd recycle out eventually. But now the weapon remains viable in all activities and indefinitely and the solution to adjust outlier to be in ban as mentioned february 2021 20, state of the game hand cannons hand cannons the ban for legendary 140 hand cannons aim assist ends at 84. this extreme should be for a hand cannon with pinnacle activity like razor trials but when 150s were converted to 140s many other stats were too low or too high we're adjusting the stats to be within the standard range up or down and follows an overall buff in most cases. Dire Promise. Plus 4 range, plus 3 stability, negative 4 on aim assist. Waking Vigil. Plus 6 range, plus 5 stability, negative 3 aim assist. The least nerfed. Waking Vigil. Nice. Jack King. Queen King. Plus 3 range, plus 3 stability, negative 8 aim assist. Who? Only the sweatiest of the sweaty non-trials players are playing with Jack, Queen, King, and Spare Rations. They can use more deduction. Get a new archetype. Seriously, stop crutching on old shit. Fell Winter's Lie Intrinsic Perk makes it far too consistent and lethal compared to a similar shotguns and it's plenty of time to shine. Plus 15% spreading. Wow. That's good. That's going to help. Still, I think it still needs more of a nerf, but hopefully we'll see that. Most of the Aikilos SMG stats are wildly out of band for an aggressive SMG, but it does suffer from having lone zoom compared to other popular options. Plus one zoom, minus five range, minus seven stability, minus eight handling. I always thought it didn't handle very well as it was. Minus five on aim assist. Typically, we don't adjust base stats on specific weapons all at all post ship, so we don't intend to do this regularly. We want players to be able to choose to build into hip firing mode, so we're adjusting the hip fire grip perk to support this. Now increases damage fall off start and end distances by 20%, except on shotguns, snipers, fusion rifles. Adagio often felt like it changed weapon subfamily to the next slowest rate of fire, but worse, and particularly when comparing damage fall off. Increased duration from 5 to 7 seconds, increased damage bonus except for bows and fusions from 25 to 30%. Now adds a plus 10 range stat. That's actually nice. Added a timer to buff the next to buff text to make it easier to tell when it's going to expire. That's nice too. Dual loader is okay on paper, but in practice, it, that reload speed is pretty painful. It's extremely painful. Reduced load reload stats from negative 50 to negative 35. That will make it a little bit better, but dual loader is painful danger zone felt pretty risky to use in some cases resulting in a lot of self damage reduced self damage scaler for grenade launchers combined with other scalers this ends up reducing self damage from 1.25 times to 0.75 times never really used the danger zone perk so i can't speak onto that tap the trigger is the meta breaking perk on regular fusion rifle when stacked with other m elements of this role it makes fusion rifles much too stable so much so that we stopped putting it on fusion rifles and then squid face sold it a few times with this change <laughs> with this change we believe is still quite strong perk without being overpowered so it's likely to appear on fusion future fusion rifles note we did try reducing stability from plus 40 to plus 20 but in playtest the difference wasn't perceptible on fusion rifles only Reduced stability bonus from plus 40 to plus 10. Change max recoil angle scale from 0.5 to 0.875. That's big. Change air angle from 0.9 to 0.975. That's not huge right there. Unchanged on all other weapons. Headseeker didn't work as intended on aggressive burst pulse rifles because the buff duration was too short. Very true. Sacred Providence is the only viable pulse that benefits from this in Season 16. Although there is such a pulse in the season, it doesn't roll with Headseeker. 
but expect to see more in the future seasons. Extended buff duration from 0.17 to 0.3 seconds. That doesn't sound like a lot. Is that enough for a reload? Maybe. I don't know. We'll see. Let's talk about Eager's Edge. It's a lot of fun to use. It's so much fun to use. But it can it can be used to do some mind-blowing, environment-breaking things if used in particular ways while airborne. While tuning, while the tuning below isn't meant to remove the fun factor, we have a fresh raid and other fun contact content coming with the Witch Queen. And we want to ensure we retain challenge behind our upcoming rewards. Breaking out of maps can be fun indeed, but it easily remove the prestige and the value of a given item or experience. Reduce lunge distance benefit while airborne by 25%. Now caps maximum prior airborne velocity to a fairly high value while active. Damn, man. We had so much fun with it. We knew it was going to get nerfed. We just knew it. it was just way too much fun. Occasionally, we'll shell perks because they're not working for some reason. Too strong, too weak. This means we won't put them on a weapon in the future unless we change the perk. In many cases, we'd rather put a design work put design work into new perks than old ones. But there's a whole perks section here. Anyway, these perks are sell are shelved. Some have been shelved for a while. Bottomless grief and celerity. Both were attempts to inject some uniqueness in trials of Osiris and Nightfall weapons, which are now doing in origin traits. Underdog, Shield Disorient, Air Assault. Though note that this may get a redesign in the future. Interesting. Near future. In Season 17, we'll have a lot of PvP-focused weapons changes, including new ways for players to build for flinch resistance, balanced tuning for primary weapons, looking at you pulse rifles, lightweights in particular, special weapons tuning, snapshot feeling, mandatory on sniper rifles and PvP, other balance changes. Another PvP special ammo economy change, if needed, I hope it will be. Adjusting how zoom outliers, both low and high, affect the performance of a subset of weapons. I.e., the scope column shouldn't be the most important thing on a weapon. They should take various forms, but the intent is to bring both high and low outliers toward the average. The overall benefit of the weapon archetype. We're adjusting several much requested exotics along with legendary perks. Interesting. Interesting. Cheers to Proctor and the team for this massive info dump. We'll have a full round of patch notes in February 2022 when Witch Queen goes live. Stay tuned. You're the tiger. So we've just, we've covered what's coming to Destiny with the Witch Queen and Season 16 and beyond. What's going on right now? Well, we have a celebration of the Lunar New Year. Some of you may have already noticed, but Eververse has been filled with some new items. Light to the Path Adventures. New Lunar New Year items are available this weekend eververse this is true the these items will be available through tuesday reset february 8th and a.m pacific so snag them if they've caught your eye they also have a few items from last year available for bright dust if you'd like to join in on the celebration prepare to launch a worm this is a long twop but the train isn't stopping yet our destination destiny player support team has some important information for you to keep an eye on this is their report pre-launch downtime and preload I was, I was gonna ask about this to prepare for the launch of witch queen on february 22nd destiny 2 will undergo a scheduled downtime at 7 pacific on february 21st and to 9 p.m 9 a.m pacific on february 22nd so we're gonna have a long time without destiny no dylan's note as TWAB is running pretty long, we'll do the math for you. <laughs> That's 14 hours of downtime. We hope you can use this time to get some sleep, prep some tasty food, or do whatever your heart desires before diving into the Witch Queen. With the announcement of 1 million Guardians already having pre-ordered, we're expecting a bit of a queue as things open up. Please stay tuned for additional details. Yeah, this may be a server shutdown type thing. Preload for the Witch Queen is planned to become available on all platforms for beginning at 9 p.m. Pacific time. 50500 UTC on February 21st. Stay tuned for further updates as we get closer to launch. Shattered Realm. With the end of the season approaching Shattered Realm, season activities have been updated to daily rotation from weekly rotation. Players who wish to complete Triumphs, Seasonal Challenge, Seals with the Shattered Realm should be make sure to do so before its removal and launch for Witch Queen February 22nd. GM Nightfall Catch-Up Node Clarification. This week's, this past week, next, Oh my god. 
This past week, the next week in Destiny login message incorrectly indicated that the Grandmaster Nightfall catch-up node had just become active. The Grandmaster Nightfall catch-up node has been act live and is currently available for who players who completed Conquer Seal able to gild their seal. Yes, that's what I kept telling people. It's been live, but they didn't understand. So you have to have already had a Conquer Seal to do catch-up node. People who are chasing a Conqueror Seal will still have to go through the regular playlist, unfortunately. Gear 4 Content Vault. With the launch of Witch Queen on February 22nd, certain activities, quests, destinations, and items from Season 12 to 15 and Forsaken will become unavailable to access. For a full list of vaulted and depreciated content, please see our guides below. Well, you can click on those. Weapon cycling. The following weapons will be leaving ritual reward pool at the launch of Witch Queen on February 22nd. Trials of Osiris. Igneous Hammer, Solar Scar. Nightfall. The Swarm, Shadow Price, Izume, and Hung Jury. Well, too bad if you guys didn't get your Hung Juries. I think they're going to be needed next season. Iron Banner. Multi Mock CCX, Time War Inspire, Guiding guiding Sight, and Steady Hand. Players should make sure to claim all engrams and other words before the next season. Any rewards not claimed from ritual, ritual vendors, Zavala, Shex, Drifter, Saint 14 will be removed at the end of the season. So get those get those engrams in. Collect them all. I still have like 180 at Shex, I think. Yeah. I think I have three at Saint right now. We'll definitely turn those in while we continue investigating the known issues here's a list of the latest issues reported in our help form weapons do not successfully attach to phoenix protocol when stowed <laughs> for a full list of emergent issues in destiny 2 players can review known issues article players who observe other issues should report them in our help form rar sam Happy Thursday, Guardians. The days are flying by, but also taking forever on this road up to the Witch Queen. So this week, we are staying short and sweet with our Movie of the Week winners. First, we are sharing a precious celebration of Chinese New Year, as well as the saint acting well, exactly as we ex would expect. You guys go ahead and check those out. More movies, more movies. Please don't forget to tag us on Twitter and use the hashtags, hashtag movie of the week, M-O-T-W, and Destiny 2 Art. Carved in Tone, Artist of the Week, Hippie. Less than a month to go when we can feel the excitement in the air. And no, that's not just the four cups of coffee this morning. We've got some more art goodness from the community this time, and a wittable or adorable wormy to celebrate one of our newest exotics. A cosplay that would make Crow both scared and intrigued and Another worm because come on, it's just cool. Let's dive in. Art of the week, sad woomy. Sad woomy, aw, look all set. Art of the week, venge, petrovenge. Buenos dias, gente, cosplay nuevo. Petrovenge que le tenía unas ganas locas. I don't know what that means, actually. Art of the week, witch queen PVP in a nutshell. <laughs> that's good yeah well you've made it once again to the mega a mega 12 has landed you've read every word of it maybe almost every word i know some of you skipped the outros between now and launch we have a few more little things to cover in twabs but aren't expecting anything as long as this edition these next few weeks will be your opportunity to rest up before the launch of our next expansion get some sleep eat well maybe even soak in some sunlight if the weather permits sunlight that hurts your skin. That's bad for you. Of course, you're going to maintain a healthy lifestyle after February 22nd, right? <laughs> yes. We'll, we won't be sitting at our uh, in our gaming chairs for 12 hours at a time. No. There won't be any moments where you will think, I'll do the dishes later. Or, eh, I guess I can take the trash out next week while leveling up your brand new freshly crafted weapons. On a final somber note, before we go, we'd like to take a moment and honor one of our moderators as we receive tragic news over the weekend. Sarah from Crypto, one of our German community volunteers, has passed away. Words are incredibly difficult to find here. Seraphim has been among Destiny community since the start, pitching in to help everyone who needed an assist, or simply sitting back and relaxing among our forums to pass the time. 
we met him in person on in his own turf while visiting Germany for a Gamescon, and even had him come to Seattle to help us with the community summit. Every exchange was positive, inspiring, and heartfelt. His love for this community was immeasurable. You could tell with every exchange on how wonderful, unique, and passionate he was, and how much of an inspiration he could be, not only to us at Bungie, but to players of all of our worldwide community. Thank you for everything, Seraphim. You are loved. You are missed. We hope you are able to rest well. We are sending our love to your family. Much love, DMG04. That was a long twop. And if you guys stuck all the way through, I thank you. And you are incredible. And you're insane. But I appreciate it. So um, I will be live tonight, Thursday, twop day, at 4 o'clock Pacific here in a couple hours um we'll also be on friday at four o'clock pacific and sunday four o'clock pacific tonight on thursday thursday night we will be doing a garden of salvation raid and hopefully uh, knocking out some more triumphs for um other guardians so please come join me twitch.tv slash 46a2 come and stalk me on all my different uh social media platforms um twitter Twitch, TikTok, Instagram. There's a link tree. I'll provide a link tree uh, in the description for everyone to follow me, stalk me, ask me questions. Come join the Discord. Discord's in the link tree as well. Come hang out on stream. Please come and hang out on stream. We have so much fun on stream. It's ridiculous. All right. Love you all. We'll see you all. Good guardian, guardians. <laughs>